What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, it's hump day, and we're getting over the hump. Uh, maybe doing something a little bit later with my buddy, Game Time Brian. Shout out to Game Time Brian. He's out making sure that you got your mail. You know, if you got a Social Security check, you got some meds coming, you got some junk mail, he's out making sure you got it. Come rain, sleet, snow, or cold-ass weather. So make sure you take care of your mailman. You know, I was playing this morning a little bit from uh, G-Bag Nation yesterday where uh, Brian Brodus was really going off in, uh, about the Cowboys and basically saying they're not going to change anything. Um, you'll remember Stephen Jones had said, I believe it was the beginning of last year or last offseason, he said, you know, when Jerry's gone, we'll probably take less risk. In my mind, I was thinking, take less risk? We ain't taking any risk now. What do you mean you're, you're not going to take any, you know, you're going to take less risk? How could you not take any any less risk than what you are now? It's not like you're actually trading up in the draft or trading back in the draft. It's not like you're making, you know, big trades using number one picks and things like that, you know, or being bold and, uh, you know, cutting a guy or trading a guy that, you know, is a star player. You, your risk aversion is you got no risk in you. And this is where you're Mike McCarthy. I, I was always taught that when the most dangerous person in the world is somebody with nothing to lose. If we believe exactly what Brian Broda said, and actually let, let's, let's listen to more of it because this is very pertinent. Like Mike Vrabel would have been a smart chase. For a man who made millions millions risking it all in the oil business, Jerry seems surprisingly passive in trying to win it all over the past 28 years. Man, I don't think it's Jerry. I think it's Steven. But Jerry Jerry is allowing I, Steven to be this, so he, ultimately it is still Jerry. He's 81 years old. He's 81 years old, and he handed over the day-to-day -day operations to the team to his son. Are you faulting him for that? Yes. Why? Because the sun is obviously doing it in a way that is preventing it is it is the opposite of whatever a magnet would be. It's a repellent for the, Super Bowls. Then that's not a blame on that's if you want to blame Jerry for handing off his team for being eighty one years old, I see your argument. Okay. But he handed it off to he thought who's the most capable person in his organization, along with a personnel guy that we all love. Yeah. I want to see what Charlotte can do. I tell you what, hey. I think she'd be a badass. She might be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She might be willing to take some risks. You know, we sure if if Jerry Jones is pulling a an Al Davis and really running the team at eighty one years old, I could see arguments here, but I do believe it's Stephen. This is Stephen Jones's team yeah. right now, and and it, and if and if Jerry's number one fault is handing it off to somebody that's ultra conservative that way, yeah, then then go ahead and blame him. But it's like right, an Adam Sandler movie. But right now, I, I, I think the blame's going the wrong direction here myself. So it needs to be Steven. Steven needs to be in the blame. I think, St I think yeah, yeah I, think, I think when you start to talk about when they, the, you know, they don't want to change. They Both don't want blame. Bill Belichick walking in here or Jim Harbaugh walking in here and saying, we need to do this differently personnel-wise. I don't like the way we're doing this personnel-wise. You know, I don't like this. I don't, they don't want that. They don't want that it's easy for them now mike's not going to get in their way about personnel mike's not going to get in their way and say oh well you know like i want him to go in there and say hey we need to do something different here he's not he's not going to do it different it's totally comfortable for the way that these guys operate now it is they don't have anybody questioning their personnel moves they get to draft they get to sign players their own players they don't do things that the guy in Philadelphia does or people who are fighting for their jobs. That's what this football team is. Yep. They've handed it off from a guy who used to do crazy-ass things, and I was part of the crazy-ass things he did. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah, you were. You know, and it, you know what? You the crazy ass. I almost said S word there. The <laughs> crazy-ass stuff will get you fired, you know, but he handed it off, and that's where we are now. That's where we are with this football team. They don't want to change. 
because it's it's they could operate in the way that they're comfortable operating. You know, that's the whole yeah. that's the problem. And it ain't Jerry. Jerry's just stepping back. He's 81 years old, but he still has all the titles and stuff. But he ain't in there rolling up his sleeves doing the nuts and bolts stuff. It's Stephen Jones doing this stuff. Well, he's using his dad eyes instead of his businessman eyes. Mm. Okay, so that is Jerry's fault for not being objective about the crap <laughs> job your to, son has done. He's trying to hand on... <clears throat> the, the, not the, teaching son how to be a badass. Well, that's you said it earlier. Stephen Jones pinned his dad up against the wall one time. He did. You know? That, that I trust. I think me. he did it again, and this time he finished. And he gets some of that fire back. He well, left with Dad's cojones the last time he did it. Well, they've got a general manager in place, and they've got they a personnel, and they've got a personnel director. We all. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm not going to put you guys in this. I respect the. I, I respect Will McClay. Yeah. I really, oh, really I do, I do too. too. I do yeah. too. There you go. So here's the problem: if this is the case that we are going to be fiscally conservative and we're going to be risk averse then what we and we're not putting an extension for mike mccarthy mike mccarthy literally is just a dead man walking because you can't expect that you know the team is 12 and 5 three years in a row which is unfathomable when you think about the little that the team has done to try and get better each year We've been fortunate to draft and get, you know, a Micah Parsons and a Diggs and things, and Diggs goes down and Deron Bland steps up. We were lucky to get Dak Prescott in the sixth round. We've been lucky to be able to, you know, put a Band-Aid on Tyron Smith and keep him going. But now we've got the first place schedule. And we know that nobody, even teams that have gone to Super Bowls, this is now three teams no, four teams, four teams have gone to the Super Bowl. The Eagles, actually five, five teams have gone to the Super Bowl and not repeated as division champ because there was the Eagle team in, what, 2004 that won, or you know, went to the Super Bowl against New England. Or 2005, there was the Eagle team that won, there's the Eagle team that lost, and then there's the two Giants victories. And none of those teams have repeated. So if we're not doing anything to try and help the Cowboys to get better, because that's what Stephen Jones does, then we're going to be getting worse next year. And if you're Mike McCarthy, you're going into a season where you do not have um, an extension you're already set up to be the fall guy. So why wait to get fired? This is where you might as well just go in, you know, get, get, get your cojones ready and go in there and say, listen, screw you. You got me set up to fail. I'm on a one-year deal here. Either give me what I need to be successful or fire me now. Because I'm not going to be here to go through and suffer the agony and everything else and be your little punk to be blamed when it doesn't work out. So give me what I need or just fire me now. I, I mean, you mind, what do you got to lose if you're Mike McCarthy? What you got to lose? What do you, I, honestly, you got everything to gain and absolutely positively nothing to lose. And if they don't want to go ahead and do it, then fine. Then just walk away. Walk away. You got enough money that you don't need to, you, you don't need this shit. You don't need this shit. Either we're going to try and get together and win something or just say the hell with it and let's get, let's get it over with now. We'll see. It's going to be interesting to see if what Brian Brodus said right there um, comes back to bite him. You know, you don't, you keep the skeletons in the closet. And, um, yeah, you keep the skeletons in the closet. But maybe Brian Brodus, maybe he's getting kind of fed up with seeing the same thing over and over again. 
and at least you're beginning to see more than usual people that are really kind of upset about this whole situation where we are right now. So, all right, good people. I hope you're having